What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. What's up? We are back for a fabulous show today. Of the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. I think we should just do our easy jazz voices for this intro. No, I said voices, not easy jazz oh. beatboxing. Mm, I'm going to do my creepy voice again that I took from... Hmm. What's his face again? Jeff Goldblum. Oh, Jeff Goldblum, yeah. Dude, if you haven't watched his <laughs> YouTube videos, what's the, the hiking hiking with... Uh, Kevin I'm Nealon. Yes. Kevin Nealon and Jeff Goldblum, it's like they ended up hiking like in the dark because I think they started really late because Jeff Goldblum was running very late. This is late. literally two episodes in a row where yeah. you rant about Jeff Goldblum. He's freaking hilarious. I think he's just <laughs> an interesting human and he just, he enjoys everything in life and I think yeah. there's something to learn from that. Oh, there's something mm. to learn from just everything. Just try yeah, to everyone. do the Jeff Goldblum voice. Just I don't, I haven't, he, I haven't it, listened to him it, as it recently it as it you It involves have. a lot of, mm, yeah, some, mm, yeah. yeah, gyrating your... Yeah. Don't gyrate anything, actually, with me. i with you. Thank you. All right, moving on. So. <laughs> All I think about is Jeff Goldblum in, in Jurassic Park, because I've seen it fairly recently. Did you? Yeah. Did he do a lot of... We actually showed the kids Jurassic Park. What'd they think? I don't remember. I think they might have, like, went off and played Legos, like, halfway through. <laughs> the original, right? Yeah, the original. Okay, yeah. 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 How many were there? Like... I don't 10? know, 19 or something now? I don't <laughs> oh, know. yeah. There was one in San Diego, and I think that was, like, the worst one. There, there was, like, three or four before they started doing, like, Jurassic World stuff. Oh. I can't remember if there was three or four. There's been two Jurassic Worlds, and there were, I think there was three original. So, I think they're on five now. Jeez. Yeah, I dropped off, actually, when it was, like, the San Diego one. I was yeah. like, yeah, it's kind of different now. Yeah, there's I don't no, know. I've never seen no dinosaurs here. Yeah. <laughs> Southern accent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know who's not a dinosaur? <laughs> Casey Zeman. Uh, maybe he is. <laughs> Do you like my transition? <laughs> well, I mean, he's, he's never not a dinosaur. T- he's never told us <laughs> yeah. anything otherwise other than being human, but yeah. He uh he operates like a not like a dinosaur because no. he's <laughs> No, Casey Zeman, he's not even <laughs> what a dinosaur operates like. Casey's he's not a dinosaur, damn it. No, he's the he's <laughs> actually the founder of Easy Webinar, a, a, a tool that we use for running our own automated webinars mm-hmm. and things. Uh, it's a, a great tool and we're going to actually kind of No, talk- it's actually a badass tool. If you're if you're doing webinars, that's your tool. Sure. Okay. One up Carry, me. Carry one up on. my adjectives. No. Thank you. Raising the in- <laughs> energy here because legitimately that thing is Absolutely amazing. So here's the crazy thing about Casey. Casey literally went from no kids to three kids in like what, like a year and a half period or something like that? And you wonder, how is that possible? He'll explain. Yeah. So we actually (laughs) wanted, we were very curious about how that whole dynamic is of like, he's an entrepreneur, his wife's an entrepreneur. They brought three kids into the household and he runs a very successful business with a big team. And yeah. A lot and, and how do you balance all that? So we, we really deep dive into like the balance of being a dad of three kids and running two businesses as a family and how that dynamic works and how the daily routines have to happen to, to make all this work in his business. And, um, we some went really into cool stuff. Instagram stuff as yeah. well. And that was a big topic. He's blowing up on Instagram and, it's a, uh, it's not, you know, it's a personal brand thing, but he breaks into like why he does that, his strategies, uh, some easy takeaways you could do from this conversation. And then back to actually um, kind of figuring out the the easy webinar stuff. We touch on that to the new stuff that's happening. Uh, growth hacks. He, he mm-hmm. laid out five growth hacks that he's using for that business yeah. this year. And and explain how he, they have this roadmap and KPI. There's there's different indicators that, that keeps their team on point. Mm-hmm. As he's like he has this very structured schedule, which is actually a benefit, which you learn. Yeah, and it's a, it's pretty cool. It's a great conversation. Casey's a good friend of ours. He was on the show a year and a half ago or so. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't know who Casey is, the backstory is over there. Yeah, but you know we'll what? link it all up in the show notes. We actually, for Easy Webinar, we use Easy Webinar ourselves, which is why we promote it. We only promote stuff and talk about it, stuff that we use. But we actually created a website over at grabeasywebinar.com. Mm-hmm. And over on that site, we've actually posted content about ways that we're using it, ways that other people are using it. We compare it to the other uh, webinar platforms that mm-hmm. are out there, like the competition and why we like this over the competition. And we wrote a whole bunch of content and and and. Um, like training tutorials and things like that all around easy webinar. So definitely check out grab easy That is where you will find our affiliate link, but it's also where you'll find all of uh, where we talk about easy webinar. So yeah. check that out. And uh, we should it, dive in with Mr. Casey Zeman. Casey Zeman. Let's do this. Casey, oh. you're back. I am back. 
round two. It's been a year and a half. Yeah, we actually just looked it up before we jumped on, and it was a year and a half the last time we chatted. Is that right? Yes. A whole year and a half? Yeah, since we chatted on the podcast. Maybe a little less. I think it was November. So, like, it was November. It was like a year and four months ago. 2017. I mean, where does time go? And, like, (laughs) What has happened since then? Wait, like, well, a lot. A, so, your your family kind of exploded. I was going to say, how time. old is your daughter right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. She's two. <laughs> She's two. Okay, so you had your daughter already, but now you've got yeah. two more kids since the last time we chatted. Yes, <laughs> I have two. My two sons finally came back from Haiti, mm-hmm. probably four months after I talked to you guys. So if that was in November, yep. we, I went to Haiti to bring him back home last february so last month a year ago basically wow. based on uh, on when we're making this podcast uh, mm. session but yeah like it's been so they've been with us now for a year that's uh, cool. a little over a year and so how long was that process so when did you start the process uh 2014 wow dang oh my god yeah and you picked we them were, up in I 2018 because we, we we put our envelope in the mail uh-huh to start the adoption process and a check to the uh, agency we are working with at mm-hmm. the time. That's, yeah. Wow. That's when it all went down. That's wild. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, everything's settled now. So, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it was a tumultuous experience, like the yeah. entire process, which I probably talked to you guys about because it, we were at the end of, of it. Yep. Yeah. And I, I'm actually curious what I was, how my, what my energy level was at at the time. Cause it was like, <laughs> I think I, you always we put a good like, front up, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're a good forward facing person. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think people would really notice the difference. Well, just the whole like instant family thing in a very short window, you went from no kids to three kids and that's <laughs> pretty intense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, that's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, uh, and it's like not, you don't get prepared for something like that. You just are thrown in and you're like, Yep. And then you create a routine around it. And so mm-hmm. now we are very scheduled. And that's why, of course, like this uh, <laughs> session was, you know, kind of crazy because I have one kid that's being driven to gymnastics. My other kid's in school and the other one <laughs> is laying down for a nap. <laughs> and, uh, I, and, you know, even with full time help, I, someone has to be around also. Yeah. So yeah. it's like uh, it's kind of nuts, but it's OK because like we're pretty scheduled up uh, and, and, you know, but but we live and die by the schedule. I yeah, mean, that's pretty much it. Well, yeah. that's I mean that's a good actual place to start. We actually we went into your backstory in the previous episode, so we're gonna make sure we link that up below this episode. So if you <laughs> want to hear Casey's backstory and how he became an entrepreneur and you know how he was doing acting and then shifted into all the cool stuff that he's doing now, then YouTube stuff, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. We talk about all that in the previous episode we did. So right. I want to jump into one of the the newer questions we like to start to ask guests is actually about their daily routines and mm. kind of like what their day to day looks like. So you know, based on what you just said, it's a good transition. What does your day to day look like? What does a day in the life of Casey Zeman look like? Mm. Well, so every day is obviously a, a slightly different because um, my wife has a is an entrepreneur as well. She has a Pilates studios in Los Angeles. While I have, you know, I have uh, my office not in the house, but there's there is a I have a you know garage converted into an office basically, and so every day starts off with basically waking up at six thirty. Um, when the kids start rolling out of bed, Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, on one, one of our kids goes to elementary school five times, you know, five days a week. The other one goes to day, um, preschool three Mm -hmm. days a week. And then our daughter is kind of too young to do either of those two. Uh, so she doesn't, she doesn't do that. And we have a full-time nanny. So we get up at like six 30 or so, uh, and we either, we, whichever, kid, whichever kids are awake, we kind of go and help them because our oldest son has to get ready for school. So we go and make lunches and breakfasts for them. And pretty much my day is designed towards getting them ready to go to school or getting them ready for whatever their plan is for that day. And then the nanny shows up Mm. at like some days, like Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's at 7.30. I mean, I again, if I showed you what my calendar looked like, you guys would be like, what the? Because it's <laughs> like literally, like I am so bad with my own scheduling. Like you can ask anybody. Like I, I, I screw up schedules nowadays a bit more because I have so much less time, yeah, right? And yeah. so 
like my window is, is tighter. Um, even with a schedule like that has back to back stuff in my calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, but most of it is like based around children, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, so we get them. So I will probably take, uh, our oldest to school. And, and so that's at eight o'clock and that's on like on a Monday. So I'll just do a typical Monday. Mm -hmm. Monday, I take my son to school at around 8 AM. Um, our nanny shows up at 8.30 or so, and um, she's there with, uh, with our daughter while our other son is taken to school for, at 9 a.m. So after my son is dropped off at school, I go to a coffee shop. I get a, uh, you know, I get a kombucha. I get a coffee, and I do Ooh. just some emails and some touch base, uh, uh, touch base with the team before 9 a.m., right? Mm -hmm. And then I drive my other son to his school at 9 a.m. I come back into my office and I do a two o'clock, two, two hour meeting with my team, basically at that time. Mm -hmm. We cover everything. So on Mondays, we do, um, we do a uh, product. That's a, that's more of a product meeting where we talk about the product, growth, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we have a dev meeting, um, on, on Wednesdays. That is also about two, two hours. So we try to devote those times to easy webinar meetings because we're a virtual mm -hmm. team. And that's when we get those done. After that, after the, the two hour meeting, uh, I may have some other meetings lined up. Um, uh, but typically, what I try to do is have a block of time where I can devote my energy towards uh, some sort of action, whether it's rewriting a webinar or whether it's um, looking at our funnels or whether it's talking to one of our, you know, content strategy people, you mm -hmm. know, whatever the case may be. Um, I, I devote the next couple hours to that. Um, and, uh, and then I get lunch. I walk my dog cause I have to walk the dog around the block Maybe as well. Cool so not Instagram only kids, videos. but the dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> and then, and then when I, when I'm done with that, I'm back in my office by two o'clock, um, to, uh, to make sure that I, <laughs> I have my daughter who's, who's napping um, so I can be here for her while my nanny goes to pick up our sons, mm. our other two kids. Um, and, so, and so I'm back in the office at two. And typically at that time, I am talking maybe to my sales guy and figuring out, you know, see how the coaching is doing and just checking in periodically with, with different actions. But um, that's mm -hmm. basically a day in the life. Tuesdays, I'll try to hit the gym, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, so I probably get to the gym maybe two to three times a week. Um, do, and, you do, a uh, lot of, do you do a lot of Pilates? <laughs> I, I actually don't have a lot of time to do to go to my wife's Pilates classes anymore, but I, I want to. I need to. Mm. Um, the but Pilates I am, is crazy. Like, <laughs> like it's, like, I don't know if you guys saw on Instagram. I'm doing this interview with a, a, a guy named Justin who has... Um, he's a dad of three and, uh, he's from Ohio. Um, and he, uh, I know him from Lewis house's mastermind. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, he's, he's coming to my wife's studio in LA. He's bringing, he's got going to have three cameras set up and we're doing an interview all in a plank for five minutes. Oh my oh, God. Wow. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's going to be crazy. I'm not sure I can but even like, do a plank for five minutes, let alone interview in the process. <laughs> yeah. Like he's going to interview me and I'm just going to, we're going to be holding the plank oh, for five that's minutes. That's so cool. Um, um, I want to watch that. So I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if like you can very, you know, can move around on the plank or <laughs> go down to your forearms, down to your hands, right. you know, your hands or what. I'm, I'm hoping so because like, you know, I've been trying, so I've been trying to at the gym, <laughs> I'm bringing it up because you say Pilates, I've been trying to self uh you know try to be self motivate myself to do more planks and core stuff right right you're fighting the, off that, that bod. dad bod too you know that's you don't right that's right yeah dude exactly. casey has the least dad bod of any dad i know I so like, he's, got, he's always <laughs> had massive guns and freaking <laughs> hey man i have to you know otherwise because you know the, I, I have a sweet tooth so i could go crazy on just eating a bunch of like <laughs> things that I should not be eating <laughs> and then it, yeah, it yeah. just could spiral out. So I have to try to be on top of it. So I'm curious about prior to kids, Casey and your scheduling mm -hmm. to now, like uh, obviously you love your kids, but in terms of scheduling, like do you prefer one or yeah. the other, like where you were? Oh man. Well, 
I noticed that I don't have as much time to be all, I, I, mean, I think I mentioned this to you guys when I saw you in, in San Diego, but I don't have as much time to be in my head mm-hmm. as I used to. Like, I, I think I was always like, um, like I'd find that I was just filling action, filling time with silly, uh. unproductive action. Yep, right. Yeah. Um, and I, and I find that now I may do that, but it's like really short. And yeah. then I try to have productive action on top of it. So, and then I always noticed that I would beat myself up for having that non-productive action and I would spend time beating myself up. Yeah. So now I just don't even have time to beat myself up. Uh, and when, when those moments occur and I, I just realize overall I'm less in my head about things in general. Yeah. Like I have to just let more things go. I have to rely more on my team. Um, and there's good and bad to that. You mm-hmm. giving up control is is not is 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 difficult for people that are control freaks. Um, and I consider myself one of them, uh, especially if you care a lot about you know how you are portrayed or what you're doing for people. So sure. I care about that. I care about the continuity around that. And um, oftentimes I have to um, rely on my team and the people that that work with me to to be able to portray that or or even put that out there in the in the best way possible. Yeah. Um and so it's it's allowed me to do more of that to be um able to to trust a bit more um and uh and so it's I feel like I've been working less this year with mm-hmm. the, how many, with all the kids here home than I than I ever have. Um mm. and maybe it's just because I just don't have as much time to actually like I'm not at five o'clock. I'm not sitting in front of my computer mm-hmm. working. I can't. Yeah. Sometimes I'm done by three thirty. You know. Yeah. Um, sure. On on two two of the days. So it's like, I mean, again, I, I yeah. So I I just don't find as much time, especially with like yeah. And over the weekends, I'm not working at all. Like yeah. I'm like oh, yeah, same. family. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've I've got two yeah. kids, and just I, I can definitely relate. I feel like having kids makes me much more intentional about every single action, right? Mm. Like I'm not just, mm-hmm. I, I, people like give me crap about not responding to Facebook messages or, <laughs> Hey, did you see that post on Facebook yesterday? No, dude, I haven't been on Facebook in like four days. <laughs> you know, like I'm just so much more intentional mm-hmm. when I'm at my computer, I have like this set of things I need to do and I'm going to be at my computer as long as it takes me to do those. And then I'm done. Cause I've got family stuff to deal with. I've got kids. I've got, you know, my yeah. kids are uh, both in school now. One's in kindergarten, one's in preschool. So same, actually same, pretty much same thing. My, my mm-hmm. daughter's in elementary school, which starts at eight. My son's in kindergarten three days or preschool three days a week, which starts at nine. So we're kind of yeah. juggling getting kids around, but now both of my cool. kids are in uh softball and t-ball my daughter's in softball my son's in t-ball so that adds like new complexity of like running kids around and stuff too and it just is that during the week or over the weekend yes all of of the above in fact (laughs) joe came to my son's t-ball game on tuesday so i mean like it's it's during the week and weekends it's like yeah it's it there's pretty much something going on with one of their sports teams almost every day of the week it's pretty crazy And, and it just forces you to be so intentional it's like I've got these things I need to get done today. And then I got to, I got to get away from that and go, you know, help over in this side of my life. And so yes, I can yeah. definitely relate to that. Um, well, I have a, I have an interesting, and the reason I kind of asked this is, you know, like we're, we're hopefully going to have a kid soon ourselves, but we've fostered. Yeah. So we've had this, I've had that routine, this feeling you're talking right. about, but now it's been interesting because it's been about six months where that last girl we had is gone. So I've mm-hmm. almost found myself slipping a mm-hmm. little, back into what you just described Mm. is like these little random time wasters that you kind of unconsciously do but then you beat yourself up or or like i notice i stay up a little later now you know and and wake up Mm. a little later and maybe it's just the natural thing but yeah with kids like i i actually liked more because of the structure yeah i'll actually stay up late a lot of nights every once in a while like i'll just be like heads down focused on like building a landing page or something you know and i'll i'll lose yeah. track of time and i'll look up at the time and i'll be like ah oh, crap tomorrow's gonna suck <laughs> it's gonna be rough <laughs> you know yes. and like yeah. so you have like a few night, like maybe like one night a week i'll stay up really late and then the next day really sucks because like my kids don't let me sleep in you know so no. it's like no, i know it's they. gonna suck and then that <laughs> kind of gets me through the rest of the week going to bed at a decent hour <laughs> Yeah. 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 I, 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 that's the, I find that that's what I do as well. Like I'll stay up maybe one night. Like I, I really try to be in bed by, I mean, it's like 10 30s. I, mm-hmm. I want, I yeah. want eight hours. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, um, yeah, Joe, I think you're right. Like if I had to compare it, um, I mean, it's you're at a different point in your life when you're without the kids and mm-hmm. with the kids, right? It's mm-hmm. like, so it's like two different things. You're just like, you know, who's to say what's better or, or you know, you know what I mean? But sure, like sure. for me, I think that I like that I'm not so much in my head. We, I, for whatever reason, business has been growing even without me having to, you know, be so like crazy about it. You know right. what I mean? Like, so like, like, like dictatory about it. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Like, and I, and I think when you're, when you have time to obsess and be that dictator, uh, it can, you know, it can, you can make maybe, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I think you're right. maybe you make choices based on your own anxiety or, and things like that, where now I, try to make choices based on, you know, um, best use of your time kind of thing. Best use of my time. Yeah. But also like the fact that I, you know, I think when you, when you also have uh, kids and people that, that, you know, that rely, you mm-hmm. know, like, like I can't, like I have children, I can't like, and I know what my expenses are on a monthly mm-hmm. basis and that's ridiculous. And so <laughs> I know what I need to do yeah. to make sure that I cover that. Um, and so I don't know. I just find that I mean, all the stakes have been raised to yes. degree, yeah. and and you both know this. Um, and so I think that stakes have been raised, but I'm not working as much. But I'm more intentional with the work that I do. Yeah. And your expenses you know, haven't it. gone down necessarily with three kids <laughs> okay. either. No, they just no. tripled. Living in Southern California is not a cheap place to live. We no, all live in right. Southern he's, California. He's in the middle of well, L.A. too. So that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's man, and school's not cheap. <laughs> yeah. And uh, full-time help is not cheap. And you know, our children, they eat a lot. Um, (laughs) when our, when our boys came home, you know, these boys were, are from Haiti and they were like literally starving and malnourished. And so they have a habit of just eating and eating and eating. One is five, one is four. And my oldest son, he will like eat like 10 hot dogs, 10 hot dogs for lunch. And it's like, you're like, man, how are you like, you have to, I have, I sometimes have to do a belly test. I'm like, <laughs> look at uh, before we eat anymore, I need to do the belly test to see if you're full. Is that hollow in there? You, yeah. yeah. So I'm like tapping it like a drum. See it like, okay, that's too full. Just relax. Take a moment. Yeah. Because this hot dog you didn't that. chew, I could still feel the shape of it. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. I've never heard of this this stomach tapping yeah. concept. Yeah, no, it's it's. I mean, I, I made it up, That's but good. you know, like still, it. they think it's like, oh, dad is medically he knows what he's talking oh, yeah. about. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the same way that like kisses heal things, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, so, exactly. They're like, oh, well, dad did the tap. I must be full. <laughs> uh, but it's really just because they don't have like, uh, they don't they don't have like a. The, as a natural how to stop Stopping eating point. thing yeah. going on right now. Yeah, because for uh, them, so I'm I, sure stopping was when the food ran out. Or survival, <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. where they yeah. came from. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, and so there's still that, that um, remnant of that, you right. know, in, in, in whatever they're doing. So, but anyway, food <laughs> is ridiculous. It's costs <laughs> and <laughs> well, it's way too much. I, I was going to be proud of it. Eh? Well, one last thing Leave I was going to say on, <laughs> on, the, on this whole conversation <laughs> was another thing that <laughs> for me, and I'm, I'm almost positive it's going to be the same for you, and I know for Joe as well, is having kids has forced us to rely on other people. Like, How do you know that's where I was going to go? I didn't know that's where you were going to go, but it <laughs> sort have of a brain. forced us to rely <laughs> on other people, right? Brain. Like, You, you guess, can yeah. no longer be that solopreneur <laughs> that's like the hero of the business that needs to yeah. kind of try to get everything done yourself. You just can't anymore. You don't have the time anymore. And so right. I feel like having kids, that was sort of the next evolution was that was a big catalyst for us going, okay, we can't, we can't do this alone. Yeah. Yeah. So how does that look like? So you mentioned the whole, you know, you have a tendency to really have a controlling or have your finger on the pulse of a lot of things in your business and your, mm-hmm. your software business, easy webinar. It's there's a shit mm-hmm. thing going on there. I can imagine. Yeah. And then you have the marketing side of it, design, right. all this stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, you were kind of forced to rely on the team and you've had it before, but what are some key things you've learned that are just essential? Maybe things that you didn't realize the power of a team or some struggles you had to get through? So, yeah, I think it's like um, the team has to all be on the same page too. Like, uh, like everybody has to know what's happening in every other department. So we have to know what's happening in the help desk on a daily basis. 
that will supply um, the developers enough insight into what fixes we need to do in order to make the process better for mm -hmm. clients or customers. Um, while at the same time, you know, for like operations, we we have to know, um, you know, if there are things that are going to speed up, you know, any any type of process. So I think it's like I think having having the like the full meetings where everybody comes together gets everybody on the same page, and then I'm not the one that's that's making the decisions on. On certain things, like everybody has a KPI that they're responsible for, mm. right? So, like if, like in the help desk, um, you know, if 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 someone drops the ball in the help desk and they don't get on with somebody, um, you know, that they they have th th that key performance indicator of not showing up to that that ticket or not responding to that ticket can all always kind of end up in. Um, in you know losing a monthly subscriber yeah. right or if someone comes in and says your platform is not easy to use or you know, like you know I, I can't seem to get you know I'm, I'm technically stuck um oftentimes the developers they their they their kpis you know are around the simplicity right so everybody and and simplicity um the the simpler it is the the easier it is, and the more re um, monthly retention we get with you know a customer, like the lifetime value mm -hmm. of a customer is higher, and so everybody kind of has KPIs. Like the developers, uh, we have a lot of different the the like help desk department, uh, like customer support and customer experience, and also dev. That both of them have a KPI for uh, longevity of subscriber, right? Mm -hmm. um, while we have. Um, are uh, while we also have sales, who obviously is how do we increase our uh, you know um, first touch uh, conversion, right? And mm. so they they have certain KPIs too. So once we started creating sort of K KPIs for the different departments where they have responsibility, but it's not it, but they have ownership around that responsibility. Um, it started to to get easier, right? So they take ownership, like you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. They're, mm -hmm. oh yeah, they're responsible for for you know for keep for whatever department is responsible mm -hmm. for X. It's like know? an expectation like, of that yeah, role. Yeah, like yeah. they're that's that's their that's what their 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 job is. That's their role. So once we did that, implemented sort of that experience in where where everybody is responsible for. Um, you know, and they take ownership of whatever their role is and how, and then we create and define a goal around that. Um, mm. It w allowed me to sort of like, just like, you know, s sort of be CEO, but also not even uh, maybe a little above CEO where I didn't have to be in the day to day. Yeah. I have operations that I can do that and things like that. So, um, so if that does that make sense? That's so I mean, I, I think that was. was I mean, a, I think there was, was some gold in there. Just the the fact that everybody on your team has their own KPI that they're responsible for right. is really really smart. And I don't think a lot of people treat their business and their team in that way. I don't think a lot of people look at okay, what KPI can each person own that's going to help increase mm -hmm. the you know the the revenue generation, the retention, the whatever marker you're going after for your business. And who who is the one that? So is this you that tracks them and brings people together and we and you discuss or is that your ops manager or someone on your team? Yeah, so we we have a you know, we have a meeting that well, like me and my partner we say all right, let's let's do our meetings at this time and then operations comes in and uh and brings everybody together like our operations uh manager he kind of does a meeting with the help desk mm -hmm. uh guys to really figure out what what's new, what's happening, you know, mm -hmm. kind of with a pulse of what is directly happening with the customers. So then he can come back into the meetings and say like, well, we're, what, this is what we're noticing in the help desk, or we're noticing these trends of like bugs or trends of like customer success or customer, you know, um, you know, customer uh, problems, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like we, so we that's how we do it and then you know and then everybody so we have a meeting that is around you know what's happening and then and then we transition into um 
what our goals look like and how we're how those goals are going, right? It, are, yeah. are we on track? Where are we not on track? Mm-hmm. When are we, you know, because cool. everything, you know, you, even though you may have like, this is where we want to get, right? Um, you don't always get there, right? And you, and, you know, anything can happen in, in the process of trying to get there. Sure. Like, oh, this person got sick and they can't now focus on this particular thing that they were going to do. Or, oh, well, we're now in transition. We need to hire this person or that person. You're basically getting feedback, it sounds like. So all this feedback can help you refine a process or maybe help that person in their role to succeed better. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, part of like, because, you know, we have a SaaS business, we are, we're trying to look at growth numbers in a really specific way. Um, so that we know where to put our attention into, you know? And so I think a lot of, a lot of it is like seeing what we want to do and be in the future while at the same time, if we don't see the bridge to get there, then we're just kind of doing these leaps. So Mm. we have to kind of have these, this bridge of, okay, well, how are we going to actually get to, you know, this, this is our number we're trying to hit, Right. All mm-hmm. right. Maybe we're at a run rate right here. And how do we get from here to there? You know, so we've put actual pieces in that will that will be stepping stones to be able to attain that. Right. Um, we're not there yet, but it's like we at least made the bridge so that it, we can start to get there. Like mm-hmm. we have like four or five growth hacks this year that we want that we're putting into effect um, that will help us in the, to get to that, to get to those goals. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we, we knew that we wanted to, to hit a certain point. And, and so we're, we're looking at, at a few factors, um, but we're not looking at it blind. And I think mm-hmm. that's the important thing. You but have a roadmap may not, more or less. Yeah. yeah, we have a roadmap. We may not be on track as often as we want on that roadmap, but at least we have it so that mm-hmm. we can, we can know where we're at least trying to attain, whether it happens in a year, whether it happens in 24 months or, or more, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, I think at least if you have the roadmap, which that can also change a little sure. slightly, but as long as you have a, a track of where you're going, mm-hmm. I think that's the most important thing, right? I think that's cool. Are, are you willing to share what some of those growth hack ideas are or those stuff that you're kind of keeping tight to the chest right now? No, no. I mean, I can tell you what we're what my goal is. Mm-hmm. Uh, my goal is so I, I I looked at it like, well, what? Well, how many customers do we want a month? Right. Mm-hmm. My goal is twelve hundred customers a month. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the goal I want to strive yep. for, and I want most of those customers to be in our pro level. Um, even though right now, um, thirty percent of our total customer base buys the pro, right? Mm-hmm. So what can we do to get more people into the middle package um, and other higher level packages? And then also what are kind of some upsells we can do? So anyway, mm-hmm. 1,200 customers a month, that would, uh, um, we would be, we would be on track for what we want to do with 1,200 customers. And so mm-hmm. with that idea, I was like, well, how are we going to get there? There's a couple, a few things that we're adding. And I think I talked about this with you guys maybe in San Diego, but one is uh, we're working on a, a free trial. Mm-hmm, right. And the free trial that we're working on is not, I think we actually had a free trial, but people would have to come to us to get it. And it was like 30 days, but like you'd have to pay for the year, mm-hmm. but you'd get it for 30 days free. So we're working on a different version. It's not out yet. And I don't, I, we, we have some things we need to do before we roll out that free trial. And one of them is we're working on a, a different UI experience. Right. So uh, the user interface is going to be changing before we do the free trial, but the free trial, I think we'll be able to get more people in to where we can convert from the free into paid. Um, and um, that's so that's one initiative we're, we're doing so that we just get more customers and clients that way. Um, we're, we're ramping up our, our Facebook ads mm-hmm. uh, and focusing more on very specific ads uh, and then cross funneling after like say one or two ads in the front, right? So mm-hmm. we're, we're trying to really get pinpointed with that. We hired a new uh, Facebook person specifically uh, for that. Um, 
And let's see. So, so we also have some things that we're going to be working on is uh, some rebranding techniques uh, from our homepage. So we're going to be doing a a rebranding that is around messaging. Uh, like we're just dialing in the mm. message for the the um, the pages that we have. So, so like maybe the home some page split and testing things like that. and things like that. Yeah. So we're going to be yeah. we're going to be doing more with highlighting our customers a bit mm-hmm. more. Um, th- on our homepage, and we're, we have some content strategy. Well, so another cool. thing is um, that we are uh, that we're going to do a, a couple more different things with content uh, marketing strategies, where we're highlighting stories of our customers and clients a bit more, um, and and putting that out there, highlighting them on the homepage, um, and that also goes into we want to be more intentional with our strategic partnerships this mm-hmm. uh, going forward, like affiliates and partnerships, um, so that uh, we just are, you know, we're on, we're creating great part, uh, great uh, relationships with partners and getting them, you know, recurring revenue because mm-hmm. we have um, our, um, w- we've noticed that, you know, over the last year or so, our people are, our, our um, churn is a lot less than it used to be. And could be due to, as I said, some of those KPIs that we've mm-hmm. now set up for our team could be due to our onboarding process, uh, could be due to just the fact that when people come in, they get, um, they, they, they start to build out their webinars and they stick around longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I, but I think it has a lot to do with like what we're doing to keep outreach going with yeah. our, our yeah. customer base. And as such, our, our partners and affiliates they they can feel confident in the fact that they're going to get paid on a more consistent basis, right? Yeah, we, um, we like it already. So. Well, I mean, it's funny that you bring that <laughs> yeah, up because you works. know we reached out to you what maybe a month ago now, saying yeah. we're noticing things are actually starting to pick up with our mm-hmm. promotions of Easy Webinar. We're noticing people will stick around longer. We're noticing it's it's kind of starting to kick in a little bit. At, you know, from an affiliate perspective, let's yeah. chat and kind of brainstorm some ideas that we can be better affiliates because we've noticed the same thing about Easy Webinar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, that's right. And so, because we've noticed that, I mean, you know, even when we do uh, like, you know, kind of promotions specifically with people, and then, you know, it's over a period of time, those people, we don't see a big drop off. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still see a pretty uh, um, strong uh, retention, even when people buy the yearly packages. So, mm. um, so I think it's it's due to some of the initiatives we're taking, maybe also, um, our reputation in the marketplace is, um, you know, is, is pretty strong right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we have great people that, that are using our system, um, that are talking about our system. Um, and, and maybe people are just seeing Easy Webinar a bit more. Um, and so anyway, like going in with more strategic partnerships, like, like with also SaaS platforms, like, you know, Teachable is using Easy Webinar and mm. um, ConvertKit is using Easy Webinar. And uh, we, you know, we saw the optimized press guys, you know, in San Diego, they're, yeah. they're using easy webinar. So I think that not just like partners with influencers, because that's a big part of what we'd like to do, uh, but also uh, SaaS platforms as well. Yeah, we've um, always said like, man, like as a software company, just integration, but that's yeah. marketing, like that's all promotion that's opportunities. All yeah. yeah. So like ManyChat, I want to, I got to reach out to Mikel because we talked about doing something right. with ManyChat. Uh, and getting into their integrations uh, page. So like there's there's little things like that. Um, and then one other one is actually like outbound sales. Mm. So instead of like the whole inbound, you know, funnel stuff, uh, we're talking about having a team that literally does some outreach to our, uh, to, you know, uh, to do outbound sales, like connect with people that might be using our competitors tools and, and try to get them into strategy calls to see if there's something we can do for them and try to go more into uh, enterprise level, uh, but also very specific sort of, you know, marketplaces that we um, have uh, customers in, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Um, service-based businesses or, you know, where we, we just see a lot of people, you know, like online course creators and like just things like that, that, you know, we can get more into um, into doing outbound sales with uh, some email lists that we are that we're that we're gotcha. pulling Leveraging. up and putting together. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. 
I wanted to ask about, and let, did you have something else on this topic? No, go for it. I was going to change yeah. topics a little bit. I actually wanted to ask you about your Instagram because, um, mm-hmm. you know, Joe and I, we've really kind of started to put more focus on Instagram. I kind of feel like yeah. that's where most people are going now. Um, it, 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 it's the social media channel that I prefer to hang out on. It's a good so, branding play. Good branding. Yeah, and we've just noticed mm-hmm. on Instagram, we've just seen your brand really kind of grow rapidly on Instagram. And we were hoping maybe you could give us some insights because we're trying to achieve similar results. Well, it also just looks yeah. great. And it looks like you have a formula to it too. So we're like, hmm. There, there is. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, again, like Instagram is test, test, test. Like you got to just test everything, but, um, it's not just me posting. Like I have mm-hmm. a, I have some people that are actually posting for me, mm-hmm. like growth strategists that are like helping to, to grow. Like I'm doing a lot of the stories, you know, I, I try mm-hmm. to get into my stories and do a lot of personal connection. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, post in a consistent way, like we look at the times that m- most people, that where our peak t- times for posting, um, and, uh, and like, I think mine is like 4 PM or 6 PM, hmm. um, Pacific. And so, uh, typically my guys and, or myself will post at that specific time. Um, and if it's not me, it's my guys. Right. And so, they're incidentally are my also the guys that shoot some of my videos. So they come in, they shoot videos, and we'll have content now that we can use for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, and at first we were doing it where we were doing uh, little um, posts. You know, we would do a, an Instagram post and then say, "Watch the rest of it on Inst- IGTV." Right. You mm-hmm. know, um, and that's how you had to do it. And uh, until recently, which this is interesting because I've seen more engagement this way, where you can actually now go into IGTV and upload like under, you know, an under 10 minute video. And, and then there's an option to preview it as a post and uh, in, in Instagram. So instead of, so what, what, what I'm noticing basically is like before my Instagram TV uh, would get like 30 views or right. 50 views right now when I, when I do it, um, and maybe you can, I know, I, I know you guys are watching, but like, yeah. uh, when you go into one now, you know, this one has 5,121 views, you know, and, uh, and it's because it previews in Instagram. So it's literally first. like it's it's basically creating the post for you on your behalf, but piping people yes. over that way using the engagement who's already on your feed or so, seeing yeah, and yeah, it, their feed. So Instagram stories, it, those are like 10 minutes or less. And then obviously on your actual feed, it's like a minute or less, right? Instagram TV is 10 minutes or less. Instagram stories are those 15 second ones, right? right. So there's like right. two different things working here. Okay. So you got Instagram um, TV, which is 10 minutes or less. You've got your Instagram feed, which the videos are a minute in the feed or less, right? And then you've yes. got stories, which are 15 second clips. Yes, so, exactly. So what mm-hmm. you're saying is um, if you post a video on Instagram TV that's say nine minutes long, Instagram now gives you the option to say, do you want us to post the first minute of this video in your regular feed, right? Exactly. Got it. Mm, exactly. That's cool. Yeah. And, well, I, I've just noticed that that has also bumped up my how much of Instagram TV someone's watching. Mm. Um, and uh, and I, I think there's a different algorithm for Instagram TV. And there's like you can get found like, you know, if you depending on, you know, I, I don't think it's as tapped. And that's why I, I can probably get a bigger reach on Instagram TV. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. but it, you know, if you were to ask what like the growth strategies have been, it's consistency. It's also engaging on the posts that have are, are made. So mm-hmm. like responding to everybody to on comments, every yeah. single post, even the spam then, ones where it's just like a picture of like a, a fire, fire emoji or something. <laughs> Yeah, and just reply back with a fire emoji. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, like, yeah, but and then and then also like you know, kind of looking at the people that are following you and seeing what kind what they're doing. Mm. Um, like if you look at and see someone who has a blue check mark that's following you, mm-hmm. then you know that they're you know they they were they're actually vetted at that point, point. Um, and you can see who they're following and what kind of content they're liking. And it can kind of help you to understand what kind of content you could put out there to resonate with them more so that they like it more, they'll share it more. Mm. Um, 
that that's one thing we're doing. Um, another thing is, um, is like being a part of, um, different campaigns that are going out where they bundle influencers together. Hmm. And, um, and then you're kind of getting more followers or more exposure in that regard too. How does that Um, work? I'm kind of curious if you can explain that a little more. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm not the one doing it. I have Mm -hmm. a, I have somebody who's actually doing it for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's where, um, it's where they will, let's say like 20 or 30 influencers will be highlighted over a period of time. And, and you could like put like gifts or bonuses or some sort of like, some sort of like, um, uh, like, you know, an incentive you, you, you put, type like a pool, like put a gift into like a pool of people, like a lead then, magnet kind of thing. <clears throat> and everybody's kind of giving their own sort of lead magnet kind of thing yeah, into the and pool. And then kind of everybody can grow. Right. Yeah. Like, like if you, if you go in and you're, and you be a, and you're a part of like a campaign where, you know, Hey, if you follow this person, make sure to be able to get all of these bonuses, you have to follow this person, 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 right? And you're in that list and you all uh, offered a bonus or, um, now I think I pay for campaigns like that where I'm not actually putting a bonus in. Um, and, but they're, they're still putting me in that list. So it's a pay to play sort of thing as well. And how would somebody Um, find something like that? Like where, where do you find the people that are organizing the campaigns? That's you know what it was question. uh for me it was word of mouth word like of mouth, i yeah. literally got it from friends you know yeah, what i mean it's like, interesting. Mm. like that's what, we've heard the same thing though cuz we we've worked with an instagram guy and and they kind of describe something very similar to that but mm-hmm. totally mm-hmm. didn't get the full picture but i'm like okay something's happening this is how you really leverage yeah. everybody's follower base and, yeah. and kind of ramp up together because well, we, we've heard of a lot yeah. of people talking about like instagram drops where it's like you get a big influencer this has say like a hundred thousand a million followers on instagram they post a post on their thing and then as part of the description they're saying hey if you're not following so and so follow them now right and you get people to go and actually make a post on an influencer's instagram to try to get people to trickle down to your instagram and we tried doing that and we actually did get above that 10,000 mark so that we can like actually have the swipe up thing in our story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the people that we got onto it haven't been quite as engaged as we would have hoped. Right. <laughs> yeah. So do you know this uh, social blade? Have you ever heard of that? I've heard of, that, I've yeah. heard of it. Yep. Never experienced it though. Y- you can track your, um, you can track your engagement. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like, it's cool because you can see, uh, what level of engagement you may have um, in your in your day to day stuff? Like, I think mm-hmm. that the thing is, like, you want to get in front of the right people, and then you have to keep them. You want to make sure that they want to consume the content. So right. it's like I find that the stories are the best way to keep them uh, yeah. in there. And I think oftentimes, like, it's the fastest way for you to create content, right? That's true. Um, rather than just uploading. Um, and, and for me, luckily, like I can do that where somebody else might do the posting. I can focus on the stories and I can say like, you know, sometimes it's just me walking the dog, you know, and talking Mm -hmm. or like, yes, yesterday I I did mention that I had a a friend uh, from high school that passed and she was like, she's young and she was a girl I dated and, you know, it's like, and I was, I was just sharing like that that stuff, which mm-hmm. to me, it's like, I just felt like I needed to share it. And, mm-hmm. you know, some, and that, you know, like just sharing your life oftentimes, um, helps people to understand who you are as a human. And like mm. that, that's the type of stuff people care about. I mean, while at the same time, you know, sharing, ha- having something that will help them too, you know, like, so for me, it's stories have become more about me just sharing, you know, my family and, and, yeah. And just what's kind of going on in my life. Um, and I yeah. think that can help, you know, I think with with just like ma- making people see how it's normal a, it's of a, a human you are. Thing, no, right? I, I yeah, think, exactly. Yeah. I think everybody um, has like a little like subtle voyeur in them, right? Like everybody's a little <laughs> bit voyeuristic where when they see really successful people or people that are where they want to be, they, they get a little bit of like, I want to know what makes them tick. I want to see a little behind the scenes. I want to see yeah. like... I want to see what their day looks like when they're not like 
on you know, doing an Instagram right. video or a webinar or something, <laughs> which I'm doing right now. This is right very now. meta right now. Both <laughs> Casey so and Joe are Instagramming you, this. And I think you just videoed me. I did. <laughs> that was not More planned everything. at all, and it was great. That's awesome. I know that's funny. <laughs> so I'm curious because I literally was just struggling as I was about to do this. I was like, should I post this on my personal or on our brand? Probably personal. I have, oh, a, I have a, a whole new philosophy. I on actually that. put it on the brand, but yeah, I probably will. I didn't post it yet. But what's yeah. your take on that? Because I know you do a lot of personal branding. I do most of it go through goes through my personal, but mm-hmm. like my guys have started to say, like, listen, all we have to do is like um, tag your business, and then yeah. it can go, you know, then it will share it. Over That's there. what I was actually about yeah. to yeah. suggest that we start doing is right. like anytime I share a personal story that's like relevant to the business, all I have to do is yeah. tag it tag evergreen profits yeah and then our guy who run we have a, somebody that runs that account for us every time yeah. he sees me like tag that account in a story he'll know to share that to the our evergreen profit story yeah and yeah we're still we trying to, to live, in our systems a little bit <laughs> yeah that way we get to live inside of our personal stories but then anything business related gets shared across to our business story as I like well that. yeah i mean anything you guys share like if you guys see there's two of you and you have one business so it's like you guys are if you do your stories on your personal and just always tag evergreen business Mm -hmm. like then you're always going to have full complete content and there's two of you to do it yeah and all your your person would have to do is go into evergreen profits and be like and 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 say approve 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 you know to 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 show up in that story and Easy. then you might, you know, just from that alone, you may get, you know, people that are following you for, because of your stories that are on those those additional yeah. platforms. You know what's I mean, awesome right now is Steven, who runs our IG, is also our show notes writer and he's listening to this podcast <laughs> currently. So you he's just, also the host of the upcoming podcast, Hustle and Flow Shorts. <laughs> he's the host. Oh. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, he's you're basically training oh, the, him right now for us. So there you go, Stephen. Oh, that's awesome. The shorts, <laughs> that's interesting. Is that like outtakes or is that like so, like a shorter? Here's shorter the concept podcast, of like, hustle and flow shorts. So this podcast, Hustle and Flow Chart, our episodes mm-hmm. are typically minimum of about an hour. Sometimes they go as long as two hours. So Stephen is right. actually listening to these episodes and finding like the gold nuggets of wisdom in like five, 10 minute clips. And so it's going to be a daily oh, show that. that repurposes just like gold nugget clips from our longer form content. And then it's it's a benefit to our guests because he's still going to give a shout out to our guests um, URL. Mm-hmm. It's a benefit to us yeah. because we're going to get more people listening to our podcast because now we have a short form version and a long form version. It's so brilliant. we're pretty stoked on it because it's yeah. highly yeah, leveraged. Yeah, and it's just like that. repurposing this stuff, right? Like yeah. it's so it's so good. He it's does an intro, key, you know, tease it off, points him back to yeah. the main episode. So you'll get, you know, triple um, the love oh. or quadruple the love That's with awesome. this one interview. Yeah. I know. So That's we're awesome. getting we're getting sort of tight on time. And there's yeah. a couple little things I wanted to touch on. One's a real super quick question about Instagram. Um, yeah. I noticed you're doing this and I've seen a lot of other entrepreneurs doing this where there's these like Instagram posts that almost look like screenshots Twitter of posts? Twitter tweets. Yeah. Is that what they are? Are you like posting something on Twitter, screenshotting it and posting it to Instagram? Or is that like a function inside Instagram? Because I'm seeing it a lot lately. Casey's shaking oh, his man. head. I, I don't know. I don't do it. My, my, I this am is the not best the one answer that ever. I'm happy. Like I, I just said to him. Hey, I saw Lewis House doing that. Can you do that? And he was like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." And so, yeah, now, now it looks. I th- it's all. It's not from Twitter. I mean, it's it's manufactured. I believe. I mean, I think it's like, like an easy thing yeah. that they're like. Oh, they're probably doing. using like Snap or Canva or something like that to like quickly yeah, throw. The, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I could see that. Really, out. It really could be, and I, I wish I knew what they were doing. But now I, I think there's an editor that my guys go into because like the spacing in Instagram was always something that I couldn't seem to figure out. But now hmm. my mine is looking pretty strong. Um, Yours pretty looks good. good. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I think I've seen Lewis Howes do it. I've seen Derek Halburn do it. I've seen there, there's a handful of people on Instagram I've seen doing it. And I'm, I've always just thought like, oh, they must be tweeting and then screenshotting the tweet and just reposting the screenshot to Instagram. But it doesn't look like that's what's happening. It doesn't look like a Twitter screenshot to me. So I was just kind of curious, but I kind of like the fact that you don't know. Cause that means you got a team that's doing your shit and running it for you. That's what I'm saying. I love that answer that you don't know yeah. because I'd probably answer the same way. <laughs> I don't have no clue. Yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to know at one point cause I was like, how do I do this? I want to do it myself. And I just realized like when I was doing Instagram myself, I was doing these long, really long posts, which was, which is good. Yeah. Um, and, and they were thought, thought provoking, but it took up so much of my time and day. Whereas now 
it's more of like, if I can stick with the stories and stick with doing something like on Instagram TV, then my content guys can just strip something out that I said Mm -hmm. and that I did and take an image and then put that in as a post. Right. And so, Mm. and then, so that, that, that can be repurposed like the, and, and and anything like you guys have so much content because you do uh, podcasts on Mm -hmm. a, on a, you know, on a weekly basis. So Mm -hmm. it's like a week. Yeah. 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 So you, you could like strip out anything. If you had somebody, you know, running it for you, you could probably, um, you know, do that. I think it's a question of like, it's hard to measure like how, what's, uh, you know, how, what, what's the ROI from, from growing in your Instagram. Yeah. Um, so social proof is a big factor. I think, mm-hmm. uh, like we, like, here's my plan in the next 45 days. Um, the plan is to have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Nice. Okay. That's the plan. We'll see what that does. We'll see if what I'll let you know <laughs> what it does. And then in a year, I would like to have within a year, like 350,000 followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I'll let you know what that does too when I get there. Cool. So well, we're going to do a follow-up episode once you hit 350,000. Yeah, hell yeah. So okay. the intention <laughs> behind it, obviously personal brand, you know, credibility and all of that. Is there a bigger thing? Like, do you, is this for easy webinar to be seen as like more enterprise or maybe, you know, courting a buyer or something? You know, like, hey, I'm legit. You know, like... Yeah. I mean, you know, if you look at what Russell Brunson is doing, you know, he's got 350,000 followers on Instagram mm-hmm. and he is that exuberant leader of the, you know, of the tool. And mm-hmm. so like what I've been trying to con- consciously be is more of the uh, ambassador around mm. the tool, but the, the ideas around easy webinar, right? Freedom of life, automation, engagement. Like these are the things that the software was designed to do. So I'm just trying to, to be that, that sort of, uh, you know, like ambassador to that idea, yeah, you yeah. know, and just like, how can I be more of that, you know, because like, not only do I have the need to have more automation and engagement in my own life and business, because we have three kids and, you know, like our software helps help the software helps me, you know, with funnels and things like that. Right. Yeah. And so I and love that. connect with my audience more. And so I just want to be that, you know, I want to be that sort of, um, you know, example, um, mm-hmm. while at the same time, just like, you know, like, um, you know, person that proselytizes that, right. Mm-hmm. That talks about that, that, yeah. you know, says, listen, this is my goal is I'm not, you know, and, and, and also coming at it from the, the type of clientele I'd like to, um, attract, right. Yeah. We have a lot of women that use our system and I, and, you know, we're not really att- talking about like fast cars and, you know, mm-hmm. and, and things like that. And in, in a lot of what my message is, a lot of it's more like family, mm-hmm. um, how to, you know, just be your best self and how to, um, create more impact, but have more time. You know, I think like that's, that's really how I want to position. It. And so I'm trying to be that, um, that exuberant, leader yeah. uh and and person that is not only you know the person um that is the you know the founder of it but also someone who's using it and using it so that i have more time with my family so i'm it. just trying mm-hmm. to be that uh that personal that's where the personal brand is is kind of bridging into the tool um also with the coaching and things like that so it's like i feel like it all kind of uh, comes together, together. Nice. instead yeah. of you know i was behind the brand for a long time well if you go to easy webinar you won't find me anywhere right like um you might find some images but i'm not the one that does our 30-day onboarding yeah right um and so not many people know that you know if they you know if so, they're using easy webinar they may now you know, they may know me after a while but i'm not necessarily forward front it's not like yeah. this is casey's of, software buy it because i'm casey I'm all, like, like no like it's right like and it used tool. to be more of like something like that but now right. it's more on its own and then i can focus on being a personal brand that will proselytize and say if you yeah. want freedom of life if you want more uh you know connectivity with your audience this is the way we've done it this is the way that this our software which i'm a founder of Mm-hmm. can can do it. And so like yeah. that's that's kind of idea behind the the personal brand grow it so that I can empower people to have more freedom of life using 
the power of automation and engagement kind of covers yeah. that idea of mind, which is tribe minded, mm. you know, which is, I think that's which smart. Is kind of, I think, yeah. um, it's very smart. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think a lot of people actually kind of screw this up. I think so many people put a lot of focus on building a brand for a business, a software, a, a product that they're selling and don't put enough focus on their personal brand that transcends that product. Because what happens when you go and sell that business? You're starting mm. from ground zero again, right? Where if you right. build a personal brand and everybody knows you for creating great software, you can go and sell the entire easy webinar business and you're not starting from scratch because you have a personal brand. You have a following of people who listen to you. They're they're not following you because of your product. They're following you because of you. And I think so many companies miss that boat. I think so many companies want to put all this time in branding a big, like branding their product. And I just, I think, right. I think you need to focus on both. I think it's important to do both. Yeah. I, I think so. Because like, as you just said, like, you know, we have another tool that we're, we're, we're planning still to launch out, which is the sale CRM, which we've, you know, had in the back for a while, but like we, we plan on rolling it out. And I, and I think that when you have, when you have your own platform, you can, you can do so much more with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, I, and I just, I, I think it's, I think there's a, you need to have both, right. You need to have your product has to be autonomous. It has to live on its own. But at the same time, I think that, um, you know, if, if people understand why someone built a product or tool and and the whole reason for it and what they're trying to do like this is what we're trying to do right now this is why i'm talking about rebranding we're trying to really hone in more on the messaging mm. behind the software we changed it like that was what it like a year and a half ago two years ago uh we talked we were really focused on the message um our website design was crap but mm the message was kind of on point. And then we said, well, I want to go f- more SaaS and really highlight the features and bene- benefits and stuff like that. And then we realized that we didn't have as much story in the message anymore. And so now we're kind of going back and trying to have story and the features and the benefits yeah, combined uh, yeah. now. And so, and my, my goal is to just be that um, ambassador where I'm like talking about the story, you know, to give, give more insight into the story. I'm going to try to do more um, interviews with our top uh, easy webinar people in different industries and just like start to highlight what they're doing and, and, you know, do more of that. Um, And I think that if my Instagram grows and my social platform grows, it gives me more authority for even doing that. Yeah, sure does. Yeah. Well, dude, this has been amazing. Um, uh, unfortunately, we have time constraints, but I'm sure you yeah. will be around for around three at some point. Probably once yeah, you hit three hundred <laughs> plus thousand followers on Instagram, it's we'll happen uh, soon. We'll get your blueprint <laughs> yes. for how to do it. Um, uh, I know we didn't even like really go into easy webinar I know too we, much. Which I wanted I'm to touch on webinars bummed. a little bit too, but we didn't. <laughs> what are like? Do you have a? I know you're redesigning some UI and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. It's an amazing tool, by the way. There's just, I mean, countless features and, and benefits to it all. Are there a couple of things that you're super excited that are coming out soon or pe- things that people should know about? Well, like we we had a meeting in San Diego with our like one percenters, like mm-hmm. uh, with with some of the people that are doing a million dollars plus with Easy Webinar. Nice. And they told us what they were really interested in. And mm-hmm. so we we decided that we had a timeline, but we are now taking some of those things and putting it in front of what we were planning on rolling out. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, And so... But some of it is like related to like direct SMS integrations. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, also, um, in an intuitive mobile experience that we're, where we already have that, but we're going beyond that now. Mm-hmm. We're trying to like the the people we talk to uh, generate like sixty thousand leads a month, you wow. know, yeah. with Easy Webinar, or if not more, and so they the speed by which someone registers for a webinar needs to be really on so the fewer steps the better so you know we we really dove in to what can we do to make those steps fewer and increase their um not only registration but attendance rate in the in the best way and so now we're adding uh which we've always done i mean that's why more people have started coming to us because we're faster than webinar jam and a few others mm-hmm. that are that are doing this stuff but Now we're going even deeper, like what's, you know, like auto selecting, especially for mobile, like auto selecting, you know, where if it's email auto selecting uh, the the screen where the email might show up or 
or mm -hmm. you know if there's a need for numbers auto selecting the numbers you know so it's like it's just like little intuitive things to make uh, fewer steps mm -hmm. for the, the people registering and then e a, a better show up rate as well um and so some of that cool. as well as some live features uh, you know, for, uh, because we're going more all in on our, our live platform, not just evergreen, but live. Um, and so, uh, we have, we have a couple new things that are going to be rolling out soon where you can actually, uh, and it's not out yet. And, and don't ask me when it's coming out because <laughs> I never want to like, I can't no, say yeah. like commit it's to fun. it, but one thing we're working on is being able to, uh, come onto a webinar on your phone. So you can become um, a presenter from your phone. Oh, that's cool! Into uh, into the webinar. Into right? the webinar. So kind anything. of like yeah. like a FaceTiming into the webinar. Yeah, for a live for the live webinar. That's really and, cool. And you guys and you guys probably know like we we re, we rolled out like with our live platform the ability to push video into it. So now you yep. can run hybrid webinars through that. Um, we push into Facebook Live and YouTube Live at the same time now, mm -hmm. uh, or one or the other from mm -hmm. our live engine. And uh, for Evergreen, you know, the whole thing is like we're still on top of like being able to play on any device in real time using players like Wistia, Vimeo, or YouTube, Amazon mm -hmm. S3, or just taking what was once live with mm -hmm. our live engine and pushing mm -hmm. it into uh, using it um, for one of our automated webinars. Very cool. So that's we're, you know, that's, those are things we're doing. People and our one percenters care more about the video playing in real time than something like, let's say, simulated chat. Yeah. Um, uh, it's okay. really interesting because I've we, never really liked them, simulated like, chat either. I kind of, I kind of understand that. <laughs> yeah. And it's been funny because we've actually had more customers come in that have said, do you do simulated chat? Cause they feel sort of like that is duping right. an audience. So yeah. what we've been really conscious of is trying to put, to make you look good, right? Yeah. Like how can you choose a software that is automated, that has the experience of webinars while you still have integrity? That's yeah. what w our job is, is basically yeah. to keep you, um, with, uh, you know, keeping integrity. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we, we haven't rolled it in. We have realized that our, our, our top people haven't have, they, they it's not, that's not the top of their list. The top of their list is playing in real time um, on all devices on a, at, at all times, mm -hmm. you know, and that's yeah. what they care most about. And a lot it. of other platforms don't even do that. So yeah. that's the whole reason we're, you know, we're doing I love it. I love, I love it. I love uh, easy webinar. It's like, yeah, you already have this amazing software found. I mean, you've been around forever. I did a sales video for you in one of your very yeah. first iterations. I don't know, I know. how mm -hmm. many years ago that was now. Probably back when it was easy I webinar. I was just plugin. thinking about that the other day because I was yeah. like, man, I wonder if I can. I, I think I need to talk to Joe about like, because that was such a good sales video that you yeah. helped me. With. I loved it making it too because it was very unique. My sister was even involved in making hand illustrations. I love like that. I know. It was yeah. one of my favorite sales videos that, that has ever been made. And I'm like, I wish I could still use that. Yeah. Oh, we you say little, that like, to all your video sales letter makers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't tell me that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, easy webinar is we'll, amazing. We'll we'll, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, we'll chat. Yeah. I'll, I'll help you out with yeah. whatever's needed. Um, sure, or direct well. you that yeah. way. But cool. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, we'll link everything in the show notes, of course, uh, to go dive deeper in easy webinar. But um, anywhere else you want to send folks? Check out your Instagram. Uh, we'll link that up you too. You can go to Instagram at Casey Zeman, uh, C A S E Y Z E M A N. I almost forgot my own name. <laughs> yeah. uh, and if you want to look at Easy Webinar, EasyWebinar.com. And I've been doing mm -hmm. more blogs on my on my personal uh, blog page, CaseyZeman.com forward slash blog. But mm -hmm. anybody can DM me. I'm very approachable, and you know I'll talk to anybody. So and we do actually have like a no. cool little bonus package we put together for people who get Easy Webinar through our affiliate link as well. So we'll make sure right. that's linked up as well for anybody for who sure. wants to see the bonuses that we throw out there because we use Easy Webinar. We actually just finished recording a webinar um, a few days ago that we're going to be ramping up with Easy Webinar soon. We we've been out of the webinar to, game for a while, but we're we have we're back what, in it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. we're about to hit it hard now. So this is perfect timing. Yeah. And your well, bonuses are killer, by the way. I remember them. So it's thank like you. top oh, notch. Gosh. We're well, going to yeah. be adding more to them. No, I believe that. Uh, I believe that people like to buy tools and software from the people that they know, like, and trust. And I think after hearing you today, I I don't know how anybody could not like you. So <laughs> go buy Casey software. You're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right, Casey. I know. I'm such a people pleaser. Okay, so if anyone doesn't like me, I, I, you'll pay for it for you. No, I'm just kidding. Easy to like guy. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, really quick. Uh, do you have a book that uh, I know we asked you this probably last time, but anything new that you've been reading or you've been recommending to folks? Uh, you know, I mean, pff, man, I mean, it's only on my mind. Like Todd Herman's book is awesome. Oh, okay. uh, that's the, a newer uh, one, right? The, the, what's yeah, ego the, the something? Power of uh, Secret Identities. Um, power of secret. Alter Ego? I think it's yeah, called- alter ego. Yeah, the, the power of alter alter egos uh, to to get ahead and I can't remember the title yeah, of it. Yeah. It's literally in my bag, maybe. Though, well, it'll but, be linked um, up in the show notes. So anybody listening to okay. this, we'll make sure we link it up. It's Todd Herman's book. Um, it's called like the alter ego effect or something like that. He's booked on the show, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. oh, did he speak? Um, alter. Yeah, I think it's alter ego. Uh, Yes, the alter ego effect. You're exactly right. Yeah, there it is. Um, I've been going back and forth with Todd to try to get him on the show. So we're kind of lock, trying to lock down times. But uh, yeah, that's the power the, of secret identities to transform your life. That's very cool. The, I like okay. it. Yeah, I got to check and, that uh, out. I read it. I read it on the plane. I read it. I mean, it was just like such an easy read for me. And, and I, I, I can't recommend it high. Like, like it was helpful. Like I real, I recognized that I was doing that when I had to go to Haiti to get my kids home. Like I had to create secret identity, like a alter uh-huh. ego to be able to be even forceful enough to be, to, to, to go in with that intention because like, I'm not a very like conf- confrontational person. So mm-hmm. I had to be that confrontational, right. like I remember Jason you saying that, born, uh, <laughs> you know, type of person. So anyway, that's, that's good. Cool. That's good. Awesome. Well, we'll link that yeah. up. Um, everybody go check out easywebinar.com. Check out Casey Zeman on Instagram. Uh, we'll also link up to, um, the last episode we did with you because mm-hmm. we didn't really get into your backstory this time because I know we covered it last time. So yeah. we'll link that up as well. And uh, cool. thanks for, for thanks doing for time, this and hanging out. Yeah, always. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. Yeah, thanks, man. man. Same. All right, buddy. Have a great one. I'll see you guys later. Okay. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you. And I hope you just enjoyed this episode you just listened to. Now, right now, before we sign off, I have a few things I would love for you to do. So the very first thing is to go find our guest on Facebook and tell them that you loved their episode with us. That's going to help them uh, just feel good about themselves, but also uh, it's going to spread the word a little bit more for us. So go find them on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook and go say that you love their episode and maybe one cool thing that you learned there. The second thing is to go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast. Just look up Hustle and Flowchart and hit the subscribe button. And the very last thing, the third thing is to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast and help us spread the word more. That's how more people are going to get uh, this awesome knowledge, this, this cool podcast training and a whole bunch of other cool free training that we give out at evergreenprofits.com. So that's about it. Go find them on Facebook, go subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review. You would be amazing if you did that, but you're always amazing. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you in the next episode.